Is that, is that what they want to do? No. Oh, we're just looking forward. Just a second. Have a chance to talk. Yes, right. Make my points known and then. What's going to happen, Mark, is that this is going to create more chaos where there is none. I know that you want to make your case, but I'm pretty sure on me that we're going to say something and it's going to get out of hand. Sandy will come up and say something and you. I, and I want to. I'm in that position, though. I'm in that position. That's the issue. But I'm in that position. You know, there's been a lot of chaos lately, so I don't want to. I don't want. I understand your point, but you could probably do it at a, at a personal privilege. I can't do a personal privilege. Only when I'm offended can I make a personal privilege. The only time I can do that, that's what the rules say. Mm -hmm. No. Um, you're still going to vote for me. I can't hold you to that. Just allowing me to have an opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. I know it's not. It's a profiling curve. I know it's a tough vote for you. It's not even a vote. It's making a freaking. It's a second. I know it's not easy. Um, but I have a lot of respect. It's not about the backbone to be able to do that. As a district council, I know what I'm going through. But the same. If the shoe was on the other side, I'd be doing the same thing for you. I know that this is going to create It's in the already because I'm already going to have motion to. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, members of the City Council. Uh, welcome once again to uh, the uh, City Council meeting of uh, April 21st. I would like to ask everyone to stand up for a moment of silent meditation. I would like to ask our city clerk to lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Clerk, roll call. Council Vasquez. Present. Council LaPlante. Here. Council Toomey. Voted. Councilor Reyes. Present. Councilor Almonte. Here. Councilor Aquino. Present. Councilor Bernal. Present. Council Vice President Alvarez Rodriguez. Present. And Council President Maldonado. Present. Uh, uh, Councilors, uh, uh, Councilor Toomey uh, called me and he was not feeling well and he asked to be excused tonight from the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, the minutes of 317-15, uh, uh, I'm going to delay the approval because uh, we receive it a little late and I would like to give you more, a little more time to uh, review it. Uh, that way, uh, by the next meeting, we can go ahead and approve that plus the minutes of this meeting. Uh, do we have the uh, sign up? The sign up sheet. Uh, the first person that I would like to recognize uh, is Mr. Malley. I would like to remind all the uh, people that are going to speak from the audience that they are to adhere by the, uh, by the time that is allotted. And please direct your comments directly to the chair and not to the members of the council. Thank you. Please identify yourself. Omar Malley, 53 Chester Street. Good evening, honorable members. May a Rivera campaign promise of safe Lawrence only possible you as our elected official <coughs> and may a Rivera support of our police department and senior officers union. Our police department under impeccable leadership of honorable chief Fitzpatrick has done excellent job to protect our citizen, stand up for our police officers and support their union. Our city has been great city because of our hard-working DPW workers. A few workers and the best leadership. We as the citizen demand of you and Mayor Rivera support our DPW workers in their collective bargaining negotiation with the city. Our firefighters, our brave firefighters sacrifice their safety so our citizens be safe. We, the citizen, demand of you and Mayor Rivera support our firefighters and their union. 
Our public school with the leadership of Honorable Superintendent Rally is moving forward. Lawrence Public School under turnaround plan is becoming to be the best public school in the whole nation. Our teachers must know 83,000 citizens are behind you. A special note to inspection department, their leadership and their employee. Our aggrieved citizen brought to our attention that the leadership of inspection department are against our citizen fight with the tickets or violation in a court. We demand of the leadership of inspection department and their employees respect our right as a citizen to judicial dispute of the ticket or any violation. We have a right to complain to Mayor Rivera and this council. Thank you. Uh, the next person in line is Dick Russell. Good evening, councilors. My name is Dick Russell, and I still reside at 34 Cross Street in the city. I have, a quest I have questions about the issuance of the permit for the carnival that was moved from Campion Common to the South Common. On the agenda in 317, the council meeting, the council was brought up, the, the carnival was brought up as new business, and I would suspect it was forwarded to the ordinance committee for their approval. Nowhere on the agenda is there any mention of Campion Common being unsuitable for being used for a carnival. On the 4-7 agenda, there is a note attached to item 7115 that said, Mr. Barnes sent a letter, Campion Common under construction, new venue to be found. My question is, why didn't the fact that Campion Common was under construction occur to anybody until after the request had apparently passed the Ordinance Committee sniff test? I would like to know what the date on Mr. Barnes' letter was. To my unskilled eye, it almost sounds like it was a bag job with the council being sandbagged big time. Just my humble opinion. Is anyone going to make public the increase in the crime stats for the seven days that the carnival is being held in one of the city's higher crime areas? Another issue on tonight's item, uh, agenda, item 262.14, is this item, a change in the zoning ordinances relative to billboards. Is that going to improve the quality of life in Lawrence or just improve somebody's bank account? Again, just my humble opinion. Is the city making any headway against potholes and sunken manholes and catch basin rims. How much money has been wasted from the city's seemingly endless source of cash, free cash? Apparently, there are people in this building elected and hired that seem to take the word free cash a little bit too literally. Now, any idea what this is? This is a piece of brick from the sidewalk out in front of City Hall. When's the sidewalk going to be fixed before somebody else rips some more free cash off? Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, the next person in line is Mark LaPlante. Good evening, councillors. Um, once again, uh, this is actually a, one of the things I look forward to is coming up here and, and addressing you when something like this happens. And um, a little backstory: as you may recall, I went down to Paris Island about, uh, I don't know, four weeks or six weeks or so ago. And I had a chance to visit the Marines over there and our, the training facility. Um, and what was really cool was one of the things I had a chance to do was to meet a couple of Lawrence uh, guys who were recruits who were going through the process. And one of them uh, was uh, recruit Edwin Lara, who's standing to my left. And before I left, I contacted his mom, Priscilla Cabrera, who is in the audience tonight. And I, I said... I said, Priscilla, is there anything you want me to do or give or know to anything? She goes, oh, yeah. She goes, I'll bring some stuff over to your house. Uh, make sure that Edwin gets this. I go, not a problem. He go, and by the way, Mark, if you think that it's going to cause a problem, just, you know, don't do anything. I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll use that discretion. So I go down there, and uh, I, don't know, I think Edwin is maybe at week five or six of this. And I go over there, and sure enough, um, I was able to, to meet Edwin. And... Um, and I had with me this pretty blue bag. And in this pretty blue bag was a note from his mom. And it also had some um, power bars and some food and stuff. Um, and I uh, called, uh, we met up. And um, by the way, his, uh, his drill instructors are all on the floor. And they're all guys, be big and beefy guys. And they got to look like they could kill. And they're in the back over there. And I said to him, I go, listen, I, I th I'm glad to meet you really super. I'm so proud that you're here and proud that you're representing our city. I go, here is, uh, 
here was some, some stuff that your mom wanted to make sure that, that I gave to you. And he was, he was very stoic as he is right now. He wouldn't smile. He was yes sir, no sir. He was very cut and dry. There was no small talk. We talked a little bit about school. We talked about Lawrence a little bit, but he was like zeroed in. And so I said, um, well, here, here, take this. And he says, thank you. And, and then I pulled away. And there was actually someone else interviewing him. So I go and talk to the drill instructors. I go, how are things going? He's like, so that was from his mom, huh? I'm like, uh, yeah. He goes, oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine with that. I go, is he, is he going to be able to take that? No, he probably won't be getting that uh, stuff. Um, and then I immediately, I mean, it didn't take me long to realize this was probably not a good idea. <laughs> So um, um, later where I found out that, um, that he wasn't going to get, did you get the food, by the way? No. no. He didn't get the food, and, um, but he can tell you what happened afterwards. But let me just say that I had a, one small regret, and the regret was to kind of put him on the spot. But anyway, I wanted to um, say that story very briefly, but I wanted to welcome three things. I want to welcome back Edwin Lauer from Marine Corps Boot Camp, number one. Number two, I want to thank him very much for volunteering to serve in our military, volunteering to defend our country. I want to thank him for that, he and his mom. And I want to wish him, I think we all want to wish him, good luck as he goes through the next process of, of working and training and getting our, uh, and, and moving on. And I believe he can tell you a little bit about where he's going, whether it's going to be Pensacola or North Carolina and fixing, um, fixing some airplanes or helicopters um, on behalf of the United States Marine Corps. But I wanted to make sure that he got the proper recognition this evening, and I wanted to introduce you to Private First Class, Edwin Laura. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would just like to thank everyone for having me here tonight. And so for my next step in training would be uh, Marine Combat Training in North Carolina. That's about 29 days, no breaks. It, uh, then from there, I go straight to Pensacola, Florida for uh, aircraft school. And then from there, I just, I get deployed. I'm not really sure where I go from there. Uh, not really sure to say. I, I guess I'll say uh, about, only about 1% of the United States decide to join the military, and only about a tenth of those decide to join the Marine Corps. So I'm proud to be standing here representing the Marine Corps, and then as I go out to the fleet, I'll be proud to be representing Lawrence and showing them how, because there's a lot of stereotypes about Lawrence and how it's a bad place and whatnot, but I'll be proud to go out there and show everyone wrong and show that it's a good place and not only like bad things come out because I'm proud to be from here and it's a beautiful place. Like uh, boot camp really showed me how to appreciate things. So coming back here, the small things, like just being able to walk through Common Park or I go for runs every morning and every night, just being able to run around Common Park and just, seeing the trees, and even though it's on construction right now, like it's still just taking it in, because I've been stuck on the island for three months, and just driving, and just being able to take a shower for as long as I want, things like that, like you really, it teaches you to appreciate things, and all the things I've been taught throughout my life from my parents or teachers and all that, and people I looked up to really got uh, fine-tuned down there, like uh, just being proper, sitting up straight, uh, common courtesies and things like that, uh, cause it's all about professionalism, and it's really, about self-representation, not only for yourself, but it's about, it's a team effort. So I can't just go out there and represent myself and be discussing, like, well, that's what, how they call it on there. I can't just be nasty. I have to go out and represent not only myself, but Lawrence and the Marine Corps. So it's all about professionalism and just showing that uh, everything, like, the progress and how everything has gone. We're proud to have you, and we're honored that you come from the city of Lawrence. Could I ask your mom to stand up for one second? I want to thank you. Thank you, counselors. Pick this down. Don't be funny. This 
see his miniature. <laughs> okay, uh, let's continue. The next person in line is uh, Lee Fickenworth. Good evening, counselors. Tonight I'm here because um, my cat got stuck up on the roof yesterday, so I called the police. <laughs> they couldn't do anything. I called the fire department this morning with the help from the community on Facebook, and uh, I want to thank all the fire, the fire people that came out and uh, got my cat down because uh, he was up there for over 24 hours, the poor thing, and it was raining last night, so I'm thankful that they were able to come out and get him off the roof. Thank you. Uh, that completes public participation. Now we're gonna move into uh, public hearings. Mr. Clerk. Document 262-2014. Notice is hereby given the City Council will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, April 21st, 2015 in Council Chambers at 7 p.m. The purpose of said hearing is to gather the testimony information and public input concerning a proposed amendment to the zoning ordinances by amending section 29-20G5 billboards by deleting the reference in that section to zoning district I-3 as appearing in the title and refer further adding uh, new section G to 29-20G5, stating as follows, billboards are permitted use on all municipal property within 1,000 feet of an interstate highway. Billboards shall be allowed by a special permit from the planning board in I-3 limited industrial districts and HA highway access districts within 1,000 feet of an interstate highway. The complete copy of the measure was, as referenced herein, was offered for viewing and examination in the Office of City Clerk during regular business hours, 8.30 to 4.30 uh, a.m. to p.m. And the purpose, um, the proposed amendment was also posted on the city website uh, as a public hearing. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity, published on Tuesday, April 14th. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on behalf or against the change of the ordinance of section 29 through 20. If there's no one, uh, counselors, uh, only discussion, what I would like to uh, get is a motion to table uh, the action on this document. Uh, the city has not finished the negotiations and there's no set agreement yet. So I, mm -hmm. I, I would like to entertain a motion to table this document pending the agreement that will be submitted by the administration. So moved. Second. There's a motion on the floor. It has been properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, document 5815. Thank you. Notice is hereby given the City Council will hold a public hearing Tuesday, April 21st, 2015 in Council Chambers at 7 p.m. The purpose of said hearing is to gather testimony information and public input concerning proposed appropriation transfer of funds as follows. From retained earnings to other assessments uh, stating the org and object number uh, affected the amount of the transfer of $485,393.50. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity as published April 14th. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak uh, in favor or against uh, the appropriation okay. transfer? If there is none, counselors, what is your pleasure? Motion, motion to, to approve. approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been properly made and, and properly second. Uh, discussion? Any questions, counselors? If there is none, or in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. I'll continue, Mr. Clerk. 
Document 79A, 2015. Notice is hereby given the City Council will hold a public hearing Tuesday, April 21st in Council Chambers at 7 p.m. The purpose of said hearing is to gather testimony, information, and public input concerning proposed appropriation transfer of funds as follows, from free cash reserves to stabilization, stabilization reserve for litigation. The amount of the transfer, $1,565,000. The funds subject to the appropriation are provided for legal costs and expenses related to litigation concerning Lawrence High School and the Gilmette School. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity, published April 14th. Is anyone in the audience that would like to speak on behalf or against document 79A15? Please identify yourself. Good evening. Humayun Mali, 53 Chester Street. We as the citizen observing the progress of Lawrence Public School on the leadership of Superintendent Rally, The issue of the Gilmet and litigation of the Lawrence High and Gilmet has been many years ago. So we as a citizen demand of you appropriate this fund so the Gilmet not relay over for the new administration and new <coughs> leadership since Lawrence Public School has been doing very good under the leadership of Superintendent Rally. Thank you. Is there anybody else? If there is none, councillors? Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion to approve and it has been properly second. Discussion? Is, uh, uh, yes, is Mr. Anello here by any chance? Mr. Anello, can you come forward please? I'm gonna let you first and then I will. Okay, okay. Um, council president, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. I just would like for Mr. An Anagello, did I say it right? Yes. <laughs> um, to talk a little bit about why this is happening. I know that we have um, important, uh, how is it, issues when the schools were built and to just start in order for um, people at home in the audience to understand why this um, transfer is necessary and important, if they could hear it from you. Well, I think I'm, I'm gonna let uh, uh, the city attorney body address the legal issues uh, regarding mm -hmm. this, uh, but I can, I, I can just speak to the financial transfer um, uh, and we're requesting 1.565 million out of free cash into the stabilization reserve for the, uh, uh, to complete the litigation regarding these uh, two schools. Um, you know, uh, attorney body, I believe he's, uh, he's here tonight. Um, he uh, put this on the agenda and I think he can best speak to the specifics about the cases themselves because uh, we are in open session. Um, but, but I can just tell you that the, um, um, the financial transfer, uh, we have, uh, get the numbers specifically, we do have, uh, we had 9.5 million of free cash approved. Uh, we've used, uh, so far we've used, um, uh, the council has taken a vote to appropriate 710,000 for playgrounds. So we have a balance remaining of 8,796,000 before this transfer. This transfer is for 1,565,000 which will leave us with a balance of 7.231 million. So if, I could, uh, if I could ask attorney in, body In reserves? Perhaps. Yes. In reserves, yes. Seven, I'm sorry, can you mention mm -hmm. that number again? Seven, uh, the balance? The balance after this transfer would be 7,231,582. Uh, and is that, excuse me, Vice Chair, uh, Vice President, uh, is that for both deductions or both documents or just that's just the, uh, uh, we started the year with 9.5 million. We've taken a vote uh, back in, uh, in March for the playground improvements of 710,000, leaving a balance of 8,796. And then this vote is for 1,565, reduction of 1,565. Mm -hmm. So it would leave us with a balance of 7,231,582. Okay, 582. Um, if I may ask you, how much have we invested in this um, in this litigation? Do you know so far? 
Um, there's a it's been expensive, right? Well, we've the the high school was a hundred and twenty million dollar project. The Gamet School, I think, was in the thirty to forty million dollar range. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, in the Gamet School, uh, we did uh, take a, a vote a couple of years ago of uh, three and a half million to uh, fix the Gamet issues mm -hmm. uh, at the school. Um, so the uh, how much have we spent? Uh, we've spent a lot of money on the case to date, I guess you'd say. Uh, on both of these cases, there has been, uh, you know, we've, we've incurred a lot of legal fees mm -hmm. from the time the school was built, particularly the high school. There were a lot of legal fees incurred um, because the contractor um, uh, was not able to complete the building, so another contractor had to be brought in, and there was a lot of legal expenses at the right. time the high school was built. Uh, and I will remind people, this was, this was all in the papers about, you know, the Gilmette School and the yep. Lawrence High School and um, how the uh, developers or construction didn't go as planned. Um, let me ask you, in, in terms of, it, this is not our attorneys arguing this case. We are we have, yeah, we have outside counsel that's representing us on uh, both of these cases. They're here tonight, uh, and um, they're most familiar with the specifics of the case, mm -hmm. cases. And I, I was wondering if they or uh, attorney body can maybe come forward just very quickly, state, I mean, I know that they can't reveal everything, but mm -hmm. whatever they can share in public, um, you know, they wouldn't. Uh, how does it interfere with their litigating? Um, no, no, I agree. I, th I think I, we should start mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Charles. Said. It's supposed to be coming. Mm. I just well, said uh, Kate's going to go up and, and get him out of his office, but I think you should start with Charles because he put this on the agenda and could talk about uh, the, as much, many specifics about the case without that he feels comfortable. Right. Uh, he does represent the city, so. Exactly. But we do have our outside counsel here tonight in case there's any specific questions uh, mm -hmm. that Charles would like to have them address. Okay. And is he coming now? Um, so then while we're waiting for him, I guess, um, can I, can I yield to you, uh, council president? Uh, I understand you have some questions. Um, he already answered it. Oh, okay. Because, um, Charles body is coming down and I was hoping that he would, um, let the public know exactly why we're spending this money and why it's important to continue yeah, there will be some to things invest. He would not be able to explain. Right. But whatever he could share in public, okay. you know would be nice um so, you know I, I he did explain um very, very briefly in his memo to the council the gen generalities of the case and why he's asking for it so that was uh, hopefully that's in your packet his memo uh to the council should be in a two-page memo that should be in your packet mm -hmm. uh, so that explains a little bit but if we can just uh here's charles uh, good evening attorney body good evening councilors i apologize for Delay. Uh, getting here. Yeah, just very quickly um, uh, through you, Council President, I would like you to share with us and the public, you know, um, why this is important to continue uh -huh. to to um, spend the dollars to litigate the Lawrence High School situation and the Gilmet as far as you can publicly share. I understand that there are some items and details that you can't share because it would be sure. harmful to us. In summary, we brought litigation against uh, the builders and subcontractors of the Gilmet School, as you're aware, because I think many of you had an opportunity to tour the building uh, early on while we were in the remediation phase. You see that there was a mold infestation uh, it was somewhat pervasive through the building. It required the shutdown of the building. The building had to be totally uh, re rehabilitated. Uh, 
And in the process of doing that, we also had to uh, rent alternative space, alternate space for the students. Uh, the repairs are now complete. The building is occupied. Uh, it's been inspected, and the building's safe, and that's the good news. The bad news is that that cost us millions of dollars, and the cost for that is something which uh, we should not have had to incur. Those costs um, were made necessary because one, someone, and we say it's some of the builders, uh, didn't do what they were uh, contracted to do. As a result, uh, we have the direct damages. We also have some incidental or consequential damages, such as the additional rental space and so forth. Um, we came before this council a couple of years ago, and in the course of coming before the council, the, dis the main discussion point was whether we wanted to initiate litigation. Now, with respect to the high school, the litigation is as a result of uh, the contractor leaving the job and the job not being completed on time. And as a result, there were certain uh, contract provisions that provided for penalties for delay, as well as uh, damages that we incurred again because the school couldn't open on time. Uh, having met with the council, met with the mayor at the time, uh, we agreed that it was wise to proceed. We have about $13 million in damages between the two that we have a, a potential to recover. But the only way, they're not going to just give us this money. They're not going to come and voluntarily turn it over. The only way we can uh, get, recover anything of, of these losses that we've incurred is if we proceed and force them to pay us through a lawsuit. So we've done that, and we've um, incurred expert witness fees. Construction litigation, as I'm sure you're already aware from prior conversations, is uh, extremely detailed. It requires specific expertise in the construction industry. Among other things, sometimes we have to look at critical pathways and whose responsibility it was. So it's not just being able to interpret contracts, which is something some lawyers can do, but in addition, not all, I might add, uh, but in addition to that, it's also understanding what the, what the construction process is, what uh, <coughs> code is, whether the construction that was, that was done actually uh, follows what the contract demanded and so forth. So we have experts, they're engineering experts, they were with us during the, during the job and we've retained them uh, to represent us and to appear as witnesses in the litigation. Construction litigation like this is, by its very nature, a battle of witnesses. We'll put our witnesses on, they'll explain what went wrong and why the damages resulted. They'll put their witnesses on who'll say it's not that at all, it's something different. And ultimately, it, it will be a determination for a judge or a jury, um, depending upon what the procedure is. In any event, uh, we've hired outside counsel. It was something that this, this council demanded. They wanted uh, expertise in construction litigation. We bid it competitively. Uh, we chose the bidder who offered the best price and also the best expertise, we think. And uh, we've gone through the course of two years of litigation. We now have in front of us um, something in the neighbor of a neighborhood of a million dollars in outstanding legal bills. Legal bills and expert witness bills. We've got um, the, the numbers appear on the second part, uh, the second page of the amended um, memo that was provided to you. We have about, um, let's see, uh, do, 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 expert witness fees of 455,000 mm -hmm. and litigation fees approximately 645,000, requiring us to transfer immediately $1,100,000 into the account from free cash so that we can pay the bills. Now what we're proposing here, and it's been explained to the subcommittee, but I want to make sure that we all understand, is that uh, 1.565 million is transferred from free cash into an account that's going to be called a stabilization reserve for litigation. That stabilization reserve is designed to allocate the funds that we feel, based upon our conversations with our witnesses, our expert witnesses and our outside counsel, uh, will be necessary to bring us right through to conclusion of the litigation in both of these cases. So it's an estimate. It's the best estimate we can give. Uh, of course, I have to qualify that it is just an estimate. Mm -hmm. um, if that tra cash is transferred into this stabilization reserve for litigation, that will allow the city 
to draw from that, not just in this fiscal year, but next fiscal year, which would then uh, eliminate the need for us to appear back before you for a further transfer next fiscal year if necessary. So this million five hundred and sixty five thousand that we're talking about would go into the stabilization reserve. That's the first vote uh, of the two that you would take mm -hmm. that would allow us to then access this money both this year and next to pay for just these two litigation cases, the Gilmette School and the High School. Right. The second thing is a transfer of one point one million immediately to pay the bills that we've already incurred this year. So that would be coming out of this stabilization reserve to pay the outstanding bills that we have as soon as possible. Um, I do have to inform you that we've, we are in litigation with one of our experts because mm -hmm. the bills remain unpaid. Uh, we hope to um, rectify that situation with this transfer. Mm -hmm. The final thing that I just want to bring to your attention, because I think it's a question that you, you all have in the back of your minds and would probably ask if I didn't address it um, out front at the outset, and that is, um, you know, where are we going with this? Uh, what do we anticipate? Uh, why should we continue the litigation? Well, it's a litigation, and as you know, no litigation is guaranteed. It's not guaranteed a win. It's not guaranteed a loss uh, or a win on their side, depending on your perspective. Uh, it, it's always something that's in flux, and there are some days where the case gets stronger and other days when it gets weaker. We really think right now, and this is based upon representations from both our witnesses, our expert witnesses, and our outside counsel. We really think right now that we're in a, a very good, very strong position with both cases. That's the good news. Um, we do anticipate that it might take about a year before we get to the, the end of this. Um, That's going to be my next question. But if we, were to, if we were to turn around now and not invest this extra money in this case, we'd still end up with, in litigation with our expert witness. We might end up in litigation with our outside counsel, but the most important thing is there's $13 million worth of damages which we will never see. So we will have ex ex exposed that, or we will have foregone that $13 million of damages. Now, that's not a good thing. And at the subcommittee, we had several people who, in fact, a counselor who's here tonight who is very fiscally conservative said, I don't like it, but in some sense, we don't have any alternative. And I think that that is, uh, a, a very strong conclusion here. I don't think that we have an awful lot of alternatives right now. I think that we need to go forward. Um, and I guess if, if I could say, if I could give a little bit of sweetness to this bitter discussion, the sweetness is that as we incur these uh, litigation expenses, they go into our damages. Under our contract, If we are entitled to reimbursement for our damages. So every dollar we spend, we'd also be looking to recover ultimately in a judgment or a settlement. Right. So. Okay, Attorney Abadi, just um, very quickly, you are asking us to take two different votes, you said? Yes, the, Madam Vice the President. The first vote um, being that of transferring the one million five? Yes. Okay. The first vote is, if I, could, if I could just state it for those who don't have a copy of this, uh, the first vote would be to transfer $1,565,000 mm -hmm. from free cash to an account to be, to be named Stabilization Reserve for Litigation. So we will be creating a pot of money that would be for litigation costs? Yes. Okay. For these two cases only. And then um, are you saying that you that the second vote would be about spending a chunk of that to meet debt that we have right now? The second vote would be to transfer the funds from that account that you've just established, uh -huh. 1.1 million, from that account into my current year's budget to allow me to pay the bills that we've incurred so far this year. So um, it's the one five also, or a chunk of the one five? Uh, the 1.1 million you, you would be transferring out is a portion of the 1.5. The total number we're talking about is 1.5, mm -hmm. and we're asking then that out of that 1.5, 1.1 .1 be transferred immediately for us to use this year. Okay. The remaining balance, approximately 465,000, would stay in that stabilization account. Right. Well, Attorney Buddy, I want to thank you. I know um, I don't want to 
uh, take up the time of the council members, but I think it was important to kind of catch people up. Uh, we haven't heard any anything more from the newspapers, right, about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's been going on. But thank you, Council President. Uh, Councilor, are there any other questions? Yes, Councilor Bernard. Hi, Attorney Body. Uh, Hi. Just a quick question. Um, you said that a couple of bills remained outstanding, and I'm guessing just due to lack of funds. That is correct. It wasn't due to the quality of the service you weren't satisfied or any of the quality of the no. work provided? No. In fact, uh, we've met several times. We're satisfied with the quality of service um, and the quality of the representation, not just service, but the, but the advice that we're getting. Uh, the, the reason they haven't been paid is we made a payment. The last payment we made, I think, was uh, June of last year, and it was out of last year's budget, and this year we haven't paid anything from it. We recognized at the time that we were putting the budget together that we'd have to deal with this issue, and we thought it best to deal with it once uh, free cash was determined and so forth. And that's the reason why there's been a delay, but it's got nothing to do with uh, quality of service. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. That. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor, there is a motion on the floor, and it has been properly seconded to approve the transfer of $1.56 million uh, from the free cash into the uh, stabilization funds. Uh, since there are no other questions or comments, let's take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you continue with document 79B15? Document 79B, 2015, notice is hereby given the City Council will hold a public hearing Tuesday, April 21st in Council Chambers, 200 Common Street at 7 p.m. The purpose of said hearing is to gather testimony, information, and public input concerning proposed appropriation transfer of funds as follows. From the Stabilization Reserve of Litigation to Litigation Account City uh, Legal Department, the amount of the transfer of $1,100,000. The funds subject to the appropriation are to provide for the payment of outstanding legal cost witness fees, the amount of $455,000, anticipated litigation costs and expenses, legal fees, and expert witness fees, $645,000 for a total of $1,100,000. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity as published April 14th. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak uh, for this document? In favor or against? If there is none, Councilor, what is your pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Second. There's a motion on the floor to approve. It has been properly seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, let's take a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, that concludes public hearings. Uh, let's go into appropriation orders, and I would like to ask the Chairman of the Budget and Finance Committee uh, to give us. Uh, a report on document 8715 and 102.15. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Document 8715 is an appropriation transfer from free cash uh, to fire department suppression overtime on the amount of $150,000. He came from the subcommittee with uh, no recommendation, and I would like to submit it as a, as a committee report, and I make that informal a motion. Second. Motion has been made to accept it as a committee report. It has been properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, can you tell us why uh, it was not sent was with, a, uh, uh, with a favorable recommendation? Definitely. Um, uh, Mr. President, uh, before I do that, I'd, li I'd like to um, make a motion to approve this item, uh, and I'll explain. Okay. Once There's a motion on the floor to approve a document 8715. It has I been properly seconded. Second. Discussion. Discussion, Mr. President. Um, at the subcommittee level, we did not have the signatures of the mayor. Uh, the overseer or the finance director at the time, uh, the request uh, made, even though it's necessary, I think we shouldn't have gone, you know, over what we originally allocated for this account. I think that we have gone too fast and too far out uh, for this request of $150,000. Uh, when we look at the note, that was sent and submitted to us. It says that we are going to have an extra saving of $100,000 over fiscal year 2014 to 2015. In reality, when we look close, very closely at the numbers, that is not the case. We are not having a savings in overtime from fiscal year 14 to fiscal year 15. 
Uh, there is an overspenditure there, and I think that we have to look very closely. Uh, I do support the, the, the idea of approving this because if we don't do it, we will have brownouts at the fire stations, which will cause uh, uh, you know, tremendous damages to our city. Uh, but I encourage everyone to look closely at the budget because we do not, I, when we discuss it at the subcommittee, savings did not come in. Uh, and the, the note that is presented, I think it's not accurate. Um, and if we have to review it publicly, again, at this level, I think we should, but the, the savings is not, uh, or the, the information provided to us in the last sentence is not uh, accurate. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And the last, if we could, yes. um, through you, Council President, um, the Chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, could you repeat that last sure. statement? Sure. There's some, um, we, in, in the letter, uh, requesting this uh, transfer, the last sentence uh, states that this added expenditure will reflect in an overall savings of $100,000 in the fire department over time from mm -hmm. fiscal year 2014 into the current fiscal year. Um, that is actually not the case. When we look, unfortunately, I don't have the budget book in, in front of me right now, but when we make a comparison uh, between uh, fiscal year 14 and fiscal year 15, the savings is not there. We're actually, we actually have, uh, you know, a, a larger expense. So uh, there's and been I, no cost savings? I'm sorry? Cost savings is what they said? Through yes, and which is not accurate. And it's not accurate. Yeah. But I do support well, we the measure. we have to have a, pub, a public hearing anyway, right? Yeah, so we have to order the public hearing. Okay. Uh, Councillors, I, I have a serious concern, and I have, I, have, I have always expressed this concern in the past regarding overtime. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter how many people we put in these departments, both the fire department and the police department, we still get an excessive, excessive amount of overtime. Okay, and I'm really concerned that we continue spending this amount of money, large sum of money in overtime and steps no matter what steps are, are being recommended by the administration to the fire department, they are still overspending. They are still overspending. Um, I think that it would be healthy for us uh, to have the, uh, the new chief from the fire department to come to us uh, so that he can uh, talk and we can ask questions Mm -hmm. as to how he might be able to cut down on the, uh, on the overspending of, of overtime. Uh, and I, I would like to uh, probably send a letter uh, with your approval so that he will come, he's new, uh, and I'm sure that, that he can probably look at the situation and give us some advice on what would be the best way to, uh, to correct this problem because obviously it is a problem and, uh, and <laughs> somehow we're going to have to do that. So, uh, so uh, Council President, yes. and is it possible to, to have that discussion at this level so that we could all participate? Yes, that's what I was thinking of. Yes. Rather than being at the subcommittee level that he will come and, and speak to the, to the full council. Right. So with your, with your uh, support, uh, what I would like to do is that, Mr. Clerk, to send uh, a letter to the uh, new uh, chief of the fire department uh, to come in front of the city council for the next meeting with yeah. the objective that he provides us with ideas uh, uh, and strategies on how uh, overtime money can be, uh, can be uh, reduced. So move. Second. Mm -hmm. Well, we, isn't there a, a... I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I thought we had a motion on before. Well, there is a, a motion has been made and it has been properly second. second. For the and public then he said he approved. This and this is just a motion for the, for the letter. It's just a letter, so we don't even have to vote on it. No, I think, to, but since there was a motion on the floor, I might as well take it and... Yeah, but I thought we had a motion on the floor. We need already. a committee report. No, no, no. And, oh. then he, and then I made a motion to send it up for the public hearing. To, to, to send it a public hearing. To, right. And that was the, that's when I said discussion after that. Yes. 
So we okay, have so, we now have so two we, motions. So on we the need board. to vote on one first and then accept the other. Okay. One. Yes. Okay. Can we okay. do that? Yes. Also, yes. just to say that um, it, in it, it would go under just as a point of information, mm -hmm. it would go what under communications from city officials. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. That sounds good. fantastic. So okay. Uh, there is a motion on the floor to approve document. <coughs> To order a public hearing. To, to I'm order sorry, to order a public hearing on document 8715. It has been properly seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, you want to make the motion again to send the letter to the uh, to yes. send correspondence? To motion the, to send correspondence to the new I fire second. chief. Mm -hmm. Motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, uh, continue Thanks, with uh, document 10215, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Document 102.15 was also an appropriation transfer from free cash uh, to DPW street lighting on the amount of $100,000. Uh, this item came up with uh, no recommendation from the subcommittee, and I would like to accept it, uh, make a motion to accept it as a committee report. Second. Motion has been made to accept document 102.15 as a committee report. Uh, it has been properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Uh, President, yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve document, uh, send uh, order a public hearing for document Second. 10215. Mm -hmm. There's a motion on the floor to order a public hearing for document 10215. It has been properly seconded. Are there any discussions or discussion. questions? Discussion. Discussion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just, um, Council President, through you, um, I know that we have had issues where constituents call us about. <coughs> Um, fixtures and lights not being operable and I was told that if we if we want to make them operable it would cost X amount is is this what we're seeing here or <coughs> is this increase meaning that there has been new lighting in areas where it's absolutely necessary due to danger yeah. um, through you mr. president yes, go ahead. this item um, first, he came with no recommendation because he also lacked the signatures from the uh, finance director <coughs> uh, overseeing the mayor's office. We did receive a uh, signed copy. Um, now to respond to uh, Councillor Alvarez Rodriguez. Uh, this is an idea, I will say, Councillor Aquino, myself, when I first joined the council about three years ago, I, I uh, proposed transitioning from high sodium uh, lighting to LED lighting mm -hmm. in order to provide the city with um, uh, some savings. Um, what this is going to do or has started doing is transitioning from those sodium to LED currently and that is only happening within the downtown area. The reason being is because um, we own those fixtures as a city. Anything mm -hmm. that is outside of the downtown uh, area, outside of Methuen, Access, Broadway, um, Common Street doesn't belong to us. It belongs to National Grid. So unfortunately, lighting outside of that, that you know, the downtown area is not under our control directly. Uh, we could have an impact, of course, but it's not directly under our, our power. Um, this one in the downtown is 100% ours. We control it. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have started transitioning to it, and we, we have purchased or are in the process of 180 LED lights, and we need the additional fund to be able to do this. Uh, it's also so important outside, to- So outside, you're saying outside of the downtown area? Yeah. No, this will be for only the downtown area itself. This is for the downtown area? That's correct. So the concerns that we've had, like, um, for example, we've been advocating for, um, uh, what's that street? It's on Haverhill. Haverhill? Haverhill near the Greater Lawrence Family Health Center. Okay. And there have been a couple of people who have asked that we advocate for them. And I know that a lot other councilors have heard about it as well. Um, so that is not, uh, that will not anything be part of it. that we It will not be part of this not project. Be part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't pay for that either. Is that what you said? That's owned by National Grid. That that's owned by National Grid. Just, okay. On one thing that the council's saying, I just want to make sure it's clear. The lights outside of the downtown, the lights in our neighborhoods, in our districts, um, when we get billed by National Grid, mm -hmm. and we get billed as if every light is working and running, they don't send us an actual bill, 
They send us an as-if bill. That's right. So if oh. you have a constituent who has a light out, they need to get you the poll number. Mm -hmm. National Grid has to come out and fix that light right away because they're billing us as if that light is on and working. So they did give us a hotline. I can the hotline. We can call it in for them. Okay. People can call it in themselves. The hotline is one eight hundred one eight hundred three two two three two two three two two three three. Two, two, three. But if you call it in, you say it's from Lawrence, you give them the poll number, they have to come out and fix that right away because they're billing the city as if that light is working. It doesn't, obviously, for the downtown, which are our own lights, that's something mm -hmm. totally different. Mm -hmm. But for the lights out in our district, if a constituent calls you, mm -hmm. you can't call into National Grid without the poll number. The poll number. But if you have mm -hmm. that poll number and you call it in, they have to come fix it because they're billing us as if it works. That's you see, because I was told um, when trying to correct yeah. that, that piece there, that um, the city has to be willing to pay more in order to put that. But you're saying no, that no. No. to put up a new pole, yeah, a not new a pole. new pole. There's a pole there. It's is just, there a light on it? There's no light. Okay, to put a new light up. I'm saying if right. the light is out, mm -hmm. but to, if there's a light up and the bulb is dead, mm -hmm. they have to come fix that bulb. Mm -hmm. If you okay. want a light on it, yes, you're right. The city has to agree to that mm -hmm. All right. because we will get billed for another light being on. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, that's so good to hear. It's excellent to hear. I mean, it, okay. people probably say, well, well, who cares about that? But well, no. people do care, mm -hmm. you know, about having proper lighting in their neighborhoods. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a uh, comment? Oh, no, actually, it was the same information that okay. um, Councillor Bernard was giving it to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? Any other mm -hmm. comments? If there is none, let's take a vote. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Council document 11315 is going down to the uh, Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, let's get into committee reports and the first one, two, three, four, Excuse the me. first Excuse four me. reports Councilor, will come uh, from, the, uh, we could from the Ordinance Committee. Can you the President? I'm sorry. I'm it, sorry. This is an, to order a public hearing. That's <laughs> Are we going to order, well, I think we should try to order a public hearing tonight on that if we don't mind because of the time sensitivity of this. It can certainly still go down to the committee. Isn't that what we voted now? Sure. Bill. Yes. You sent it down to the. Oh, you sent it down to the. Budget oh, the. Uh, you need to be sent it down. One thirteen fifteen. One thirteen fifteen. One thirteen fifteen. Yes, Mr. President. I'm sorry. Um, for one thirteen fifteen, what the request made is to order a public hearing pending the report from the subcommittee. Okay. Um, Don't we have to suspend the rules? Are we uh, are we able to do that, Mr. Chair? Mr. Any, uh, any? Uh, so we will need to declare emergency. Okay. okay. It's, not going, it's not going to the subcommittee. Uh, suspend the rules of council uh, mm -hmm. to declare emergency. If it's not going to the subcommittee. It is going. No, it's yeah, going it is to going to the subcommittee. To the subcommittee. But we, okay. we is, would like to order a going. public hearing before a report from the subcommittee. Yeah. That's, suspend that's, the, both the suspend the rules. Right. That's what I say. Uh, declare an emergency you still have for the to purpose do that, of yeah. ordering a public hearing and okay. then refer the item to the subcommittee for further proceedings. Okay. Okay. And make uh, an informal motion. You want to make the motion to Second. suspend the rules and order a public hearing? Mm -hmm. yes. Second. Second. So there's a motion to suspend the rules and order a public hearing. Uh, and it has been properly seconded. Are there any discussions or questions? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Again, I'm sending document 113.15. To the uh, budget on finance yes. committee. I just want to make sure people understand, uh, all of us understand why we're doing this as opposed to the normal way yes. of business. And the only reason why I think this is happening is that uh, this is a significant um, loan authorization that we're looking to get. And right now, the interest rates are at a premium. Mm -hmm. And okay. And they could be volatile, and we want to mm -hmm. secure this as soon as possible. That's right. So if we go ahead and we secure at least a public hearing date, we can fast track it. It still provides individuals mm -hmm. in our city an opportunity at the public hearing to voice mm -hmm. their approval or their disapproval, but at least we're going to uh, try to safeguard as low an interest rate as possible. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Plan, for Council the explanation. Council President, regarding to the item. I'm sorry? Regarding to the yes. item. We just want to make sure we were in a meeting. We, I just want to make sure that all the papers that I request to be at the meeting in the proper time that we can review the for this document. For you that mean. document, yes. Uh, it should be. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm sure that the chairman of the budget and finance committee will make sure that whatever documents were requested that they are there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he doesn't know because I wasn't admitted by myself. Mr. 
Please, Mr. Arnel, no. Yes. Uh, okay. I just want to make sure that we have all the proper mm -hmm. papers because I want to have the time to review them. Of course. Council President? Yes. Thank you. And the other thing, too, um, it just says document 11315, loan order and authorization to borrow eight, <laughs> eight million dollars. What is it for? It's going to be. Uh, Mm -hmm. Only because the people me, at home don't know, and I would like for them to well, understand let me, let me what... Give you, let me give you briefly what the purpose is, uh, um, and I'm going to give you an overview. Uh, the uh, school department moved out of the building on SS3, and it's divided into two separate locations, uh, and the intention is uh, it was intended long ago to purchase uh, a building uh, so that we won't have to pay rent. So the objective of borrowing that money is to purchase, purchase the building and rehab at the same time. Okay? So basically that's what it is for. Again, you will have the chance to discuss it. We will have the chance to discuss it and express your opinion uh, further when it comes to that. So, but again, uh, I'm just giving you an overview. Thank you for your answer. Okay. okay. Um, Ms. Move into committee reports. Uh, Madam Chair of the Ordinance Committee. Um, thank you, Council President. Um, Council President, there's an error on the agenda, and I'm going to take responsibility because I didn't, um, I was not feeling well this week, and I didn't go through the agenda as okay. thoroughly as I should have ahead of time. Items 403 14, 52 15, 66 15, and 80 15. We did at subcommittee move to take those as a block, mm -hmm. but the motion was actually to let Lillian know that we were missing paperwork on those items in the packet. I know like one of the items you said the city attorney had drafted the language, but we yes. didn't have it in our packages. Mm -hmm. And the, the motion was to reach out to Lillian and the city attorney and have them make sure that that language yes. got into our packages. That, that's correct, yes. And they inadvertently wound up on the council okay. agenda. So that, so, so that, that is still at the committee level. The we committee are waiting level. Yeah. Okay. for those. Okay. So I don't think we need to even make a motion because they should have been. We would like to make a motion to recommit those documents as a package back to the ordinance committee. Yeah, I would make a motion. It shouldn't have been here in the first place. Hold on. Why don't you make the motion? I'm going to make a motion to please um, recommit those four documents as a block back to the subcommittee. Second. Motion has been made and properly second. Uh, did you have a, a comment? Just that they shouldn't have been here in the first place, so I didn't even see why we okay. had to do that. It was an error. Okay. Uh, there's a motion on the floor to recommit uh, those four documents, document 403, 14, 52, 15, 66, 15, and 80, 15, back to the ordinance committee. Motion has been properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, Chairman of the Budget and Finance Committee, document 89, 15. Thank you, Mr. President. Document 8915 is a student awareness of fire education and senior uh, safe grant on the amount of $10,818. And I would like to make a motion to approve. Motion has been made to approve document 8915, the senior safe grant of $10,818. Is there a second? Second. Councilors. Second. Uh, motion has been made and properly second. Are there any questions? Yeah. If there is none, or in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Continue, uh, Mr. Chairman of the uh, Budget and Finance. Document 9715 is a safe haven grant, uh, Massachusetts, on the amount of $145,000, 236. Uh, it was placed on the agenda by Mr. James Barnes, and I would like to make a motion to approve. Motion has been made to approve document 9715, uh, a grant of 145236 uh, Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any questions or comments? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it continue with document 9815. Thank you, Mr. President. Document 9815 is a community development block grant uh, on the amount of $1,494,258. Uh, and the home grant on the amount of $636,250 also placed on the agenda by Mr. James Barnes, and I would like to make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Um, uh, is there a second? I second. Uh, motion uh, has been second. Discussion. Is there any discussion? discussion. Yes. Yeah, is that? Order a public hearing. Public hearing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Order a public hearing. Okay. The motion is to order a public hearing. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. No discussion for me. Okay, so uh, there is a motion on the floor to uh, order a public hearing for document 9815. It has been properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Continue. Uh, Mr. President, document 9915 is the South Lawrence uh, Recreation Complex uh, Park Grant on the amount of $400,000. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made to approve document 9915 uh, grant of $400,000. It has been properly seconded. Are there any questions? Yeah. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Continue. Uh, Mr. President, document 115 is the Homeless uh, Legal Services Grant of Massachusetts on the amount of $14,991. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made to approve document 115. It has been properly second. Uh, homeless Legal Service Grant for, for $14,991. Are there any discussion? Discussion. Go ahead. Um, is Mr. Barnes here? Uh, we have Ms. Fink. Uh, there's somebody else? Sue? Ms. Fink? More beautiful than Mr. Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, How are you? I'm good, thanks, Councilor. How are you? Good to see you. Um, just quickly, this homeless uh, legal services grant, mm -hmm. is this, the city's going to subcontract? Yes, uh, with Northeast Legal Aid. Okay, so to be able to pay, what is the Mary McValley Legal? services or no, it's northeast legal aid legal aid right mm -hmm. and this grant will um, help pay some of the attorney fees for servicing um, homeless individuals who, or those that are at risk of being evicted from their home okay so all, all the person would have to do is go to community development and the referral is done there or? No, they should go right to northeast legal aid or if they've got a, um, an eviction notice and they have been called to housing court, Northeast Legal Aid has someone at housing court okay. that they Did can you, represent them. Before you say legal aid, what's that word? Northeast Legal Aid. Northeast Legal Northeast Aid. Northeast Legal Aid, okay. Sorry. Sometimes I have problems with the mics and stuff. All right, thank you so much. It's an interesting grant. You know, it's, uh, I think it's important to have some kind of uh, representation and trying to access some homes, right? You Thank you. Question? Go ahead. Thank you, Council President. Um, of the subcommittee, um, you weren't <coughs> able to come, but I asked for a report, the report that you sent to the state to see how the, the money was distributed. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't get that message. I'll, I'll make sure that you get that tomorrow. All right, thank you. Okay. So if there are no the further question, question uh, let's take a vote. Oh. oh, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Continue with document 10115. Uh, document 10115 is uh, the acceptance of an EPA uh, area uh, white planning grant on the amount of $200,000. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made to approve document 10115, acceptance of a white planning grant of 200000 uh, motion has been properly seconded. Any questions or discussions? Discussion. Go ahead. Um, Council President, I'd like to know what what exactly is meant by an EPA area-wide planning grant. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, of the Board of President, do you have that information? I saw Mr. The, Vargas here. Uh, yeah, EPA is the um, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Right. Uh, so what they are allowing us to do is uh, to be able to do uh, a, a, a planning program for uh, brownfields um, revitalization in the um, rail, rail tracks okay. that run the Manchester line, I believe it's called. May is I ask the official Mr. Name? Vargas, through you, sure. Council President. Yes, go ahead. Hi, how are you this evening? Thank, thanks, Madam Vice Chair. Good, thank um, you so much. Uh, could you explain a little bit? And um, I know what EPA is and all that sure. stuff, but maybe for the people at home, you can. Yeah. So, so I, as as I mentioned during during the subcommittee, this is a part two of, of this effort. Uh, the first part was um, that you guys voted on was to approve a 99 year lease with the MBTA that allowed us to move forward with this portion of uh, the second part of this, which is an, an area wide planning grant that would allow us to give, a, give us a better sense of what type of reuse 
mm -hmm. um, we could have at the rail. And the rail goes from um, South End. Merrimack Paper, so Merrimack Street, all the way up to Manchester Street. And the, at the end of this, this project, we hope to have a plan for reuse, for passive use, so running, biking, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the other part of that is to create, um, give us a better sense of what market conditions could be bared by the redevelopment of these sites in and around the rail trail. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna be taking <clears throat> out those rails that are uh, not in use and are like, it's really, um, I guess, making a wreck out of our roads too, isn't it? So, so ultimately, the plan is to mm -hmm. um, to remove the rails and the ties from mm -hmm. from that entire stretch, mm -hmm. um, which so, would allow us to to repave or, or or put some other surface on there that's better than what's there now. Great. So, um, when you say the uh, area wide planning grant, it's it's really that area. Right, so, what, so the area is specifically, the catalyst site, if, if you will, is the rail trail, but we also want to take a look at the, the parcels that abut it and how we, could better, um, how we could better plan for the reuse of those parcels as well. There are some vacant and blighted properties in and around those areas, mm -hmm. so we want to get a better sense of how we could use those sites as well, not just the rail alone. Yeah, is this also consistent with um, Representative uh, Frank Moran's um, discussion on the discussions that he's had on one group or in front of one group or another. Yes. The monies that he said he was going to bring down in order to to like kind of revamp that whole area near the cemetery and right for mm -hmm. um, representative the, Moran the is a, mm -hmm. yeah. representative Moran is a big part of this process and he's been a big mm -hmm. supporter and has really helped move this project along. So we're going to be working very, very closely with Representative Moran on this project. Good to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Okay. Uh, there is a motion on the floor. Uh, it has been properly second. Let's take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Madam Chair of the Ordinance Committee, uh, document 373.14 and so on. Can I ask for a quick indulgence? Um, I actually wanted to make a motion to suspend the rules. Um, at our last meeting, we had document number 71-15, which was that related to Semana Hispana. They have two festivals coming up. One is in May. It's the pre-carnival fundraising carnival. Um, at that meeting, we had moved the location over to the South Common. And I know there's been a lot of conversations between that meeting and this meeting with Mr. John Flynn from their festivities as well as members of the committee. And um, as being on the prevailing side of document 7115, I voted in favor of it. I wanted to, one, make a motion to suspend the rules, and if that passes, then make a motion to reconsider. Um, I, I think there's, there were errors made on our part as a council, but also um, just things that were not properly factored in as far as the limitations of the South Common as well as the um, facilities at the parking facility that was offered to them are actually much more appropriate than they initially thought. Um, so at this time, I just want to make, a, I guess, a motion to suspend the rules if someone was to second it, and then okay. for purposes uh, of There is a motion on the floor to suspend the rule and reconsider the vote on document 7115. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion has been made and properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There's no discussion. No. Okay. Discussion? Can I have a discussion first? Uh, it didn't pass. No. It's a motion. It's, no, not it's, the it's, emergency. it's a motion to suspend the rules. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can I have a discussion on that? Huh? No. Can I have a discussion before we, we take the, the roll call on it? Uh, we already took the call, I but I, if there is no objection from the rest of the council, uh, I want no discussion about it. We voted, and there's no discussion about it. Yeah, I need, but we need a roll call. I'm sorry. We need a roll call. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Clerk, go ahead. Council Vasquez. No. Council Toomey noted. Council Reyes. No. Council, Council El Monte. Sure. I know I don't get many, many votes or Council, <laughs> Council Aquino. No. 
You forgot Kelso. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> My apologies. It really is. My apologies. Thank Everybody you. Everybody against me. My apologies. We still. I'll start again. <laughs> Council Vasquez. We do love them. It's not. <laughs> Council Vasquez. No. Still no. Okay. <laughs> Council Laplante. Yes. Thank you. Council Toomey. And noted. Council Reyes. No. Still no. Okay. Thank you. Council Monte. Council Aquino. No. Council Bernal. Yes. Council. Vice President? No. And Council President? No. M motion fails. Okay. Council uh, President, I just want to, if I could take this time, I want to submit something to the city clerk through you. Would that be okay at this point? I'm sorry, to submit? I want to submit a piece of paper tonight through you. Would that be uh, permissible at this point? Submit something to you for the council and for the, for the clerk? Sure. So this right here is an open meeting law complaint form that the city council in violation of the open meeting law mm -hmm. has to be submitted to the clerk and to the rest of the council. Okay. So I'll do that officially right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair of the Ordinance Committee, will you continue, please? Sorry. Thank you very much, Council President. Sorry about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, document number 373-14 was residential parking at 6-8 East Haverhill Street. Um, this was put on the agenda by Councilor Reyes. It went out to the police department and came back with a favorable recommendation from um, Officer Scanlon. I just want to ask Councilor Reyes, I thought Officer Scanlon said it was actually 2-8 um, on the property, even though it says 6-8 on the agenda. There's more than one? No, it's just 6-8. 6-8 okay. yep. East Haverhill Street. Um, and it was to order public hearing and any requisite language from the city attorney to make that in the form of a motion. Second. Second. Motion is made to order public hearing for document 373.14. It has been properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Continue, Madam Chair. Uh, document number 35-15 is handicapped parking at 883 East Street. This was requested by Vilma Garcia. There is a placard on file. There's a favorable recommendation from Officer Scanlon in the file. It came up from the subcommittee with a unanimous favorable recommendation to order public hearing on the matter, and I make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion has been made to order a public hearing for document 3515. It has been properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Continue, Madam Chair. Document number 54-15 was no parking on East Gilbert Street. This was requested by Marie Goslin. Um, Officer Scanlon did file a favorable recommendation in his report. It came up with the, from the subcommittee to with unanimous favorable recommendation to order public hearing, and I make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion has been made to order public hearing on document 5415, and it has been properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Continue, Madam Chair. Document number 69-15 was a request for handicapped parking at 37A Berkeley Street. This was requested by an Eddie Gomez and sponsored by Council President Maldonado. It came up from the subcommittee with a unanimous favorable recommendation to order public hearing and any requisite language from the city attorney and to make that in the form of a motion. Motion second. Has been made <laughs> and properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Continue, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council President. Document number 81-15 is an employee disclosure filed by Maria A. Halloran from the Tax Collector's Office. Um, the disclosure was properly received by the subcommittee, and we made a motion to accept the disclosure and allow for the potential conflict and make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion has been made to approve document 81-15, employee disclosure. It has been properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Continue, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council President. Similarly, document number 82-15 is an employee disclosure. This also came up from the subcommittee with a unanimous favorable recommendation. The paperwork by Patricia R. Waters was properly filed and, um, and approved by the subcommittee. I make that in the motion to approve the disclosure. I make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion has been made to approve document 82-15, employee disclosure. It has been properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, thank you, Council President. Document number 83-15 was the Iglesia de Ferencorce, thank you, <laughs> and Cristo. Mm -hmm. They were requesting permission to use the Costello Park on June 6th and 13th, August 1st and September 12th, the Cronin Park on June 27th, July 11th, and August 15th, the West Street Park on July 18th, August 22nd, and September 26th, the Sullivan Park on July 25th, August 29th and September 19th, and the Starro Park on August 8th 
in the Camp Nou Common Park on September 5th. Um, this is for religious service from 3 to 7 p.m. on those dates. Um, this was requested by a Geraldo um, Sendo. Sedeño. Sedeño. Thank you, Sedeño. Um, it came up from the subcommittee with a unanimous favorable recommendation with one caveat was just that the applicant be aware of other city events going on on that Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. um, which might encompass that September 5th. I just want to let you know that um, Nelson Ortiz from the Recreation Department did reach out to me. He let me know. He reached out to Michael Morley from the Feast of the Three Saints. They have the festivities on the 5th, which is that Saturday. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morley did assure them that they're not using the common, so that shouldn't be a conflict for them. And then Mr. Um, Ortiz also reached out to the Bread and Roses Heritage Park people that are there on Monday. Mm -hmm. and they don't start their setup or anything till usually late Sunday or early Monday. So it should not conflict with the other events anyway, but the applicant was aware if there is a conflict yes. that he would secede to those groups. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It came up with that caveat with a unanimous favorable recommendation from the subcommittee and I make that in the form of a motion. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and properly second to approve Discussion. document 8315. I'm sorry? Discussion. Discussion, go ahead. <coughs> so uh, as I'm reviewing this particular document and the, the ability to use uh, various parks um, on a variety of different dates. I, my eyes immediately went to the sign-off sheet and I wanted to make sure that the sign-offs were there for all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I'm, maybe because it's fresh in my mind a little bit, so I'm kind of comparing that to a more recent South Common vote that we did. We're dealing with the, uh, the sign-offs and I'm just kind of comparing them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to um, just point out that um, Unlike the South Common one that did not get any of these uh, sign-offs, uh, this one right here received them from the Recreation Department, uh, the Building Inspector, the Licensing Board, the Fire Electrical, the Police Department, the Water Department, the Food Inspector, the City Clerk, the Fire Prevention uh, Supervisor, and the DPW Director. So it appears to me as though these signatures are really important before we pass this mm -hmm. thing this evening. Because it would seem to me as though we want to make sure that each one of these departments mm -hmm. are fully aware of what's happening on that date and each one of them had a chance to review the, the documents and each one of them had an opportunity to, um, to make sure that it was in the best interest of the citizens and the neighborhood, et cetera, that this is a proper place and a proper time to have it. And I just wanted to point out that this is very dissimilar to what happened earlier when the carnival was going on to the South Common because none of those particular entities were signed off. Well, I'm going to support this this evening because I do believe that each one of them has been matched. I just want to point out that there is a significant inconsistency that has now arisen because what happened from the South Common earlier two weeks ago, I did not have all the sign offs for the South Common and this one does. And so I just want to make sure that I, that you want, that my colleagues are aware that I will be supporting this this evening because all the sign-offs matter and they all point out that for these particular locations. Thank you, Mr. Plant. Uh, um, are there any, I'm sorry? Sorry, I'll yield to. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as much as I, I understand the concern council, you know, the councillor from District F, Councillor Lapin has brought up, I have to respectfully disagree with them. I, uh, it, it clearly, you know, what had happened in, in the previous uh, two weeks with a different similar um, vote was filled out. We did receive the packet. It, was, it came before the, the ordinance subcommittee. At the ordinance subcommittee, a recommendation by the administration was made the administration was completely aware of what was going on. So I have to respectfully disagree with this. You know, I, I that, is, hate, that is accurate because I watched the meeting. Let, let me cut you off. Mm -hmm. I would hate to generate discussion mm -hmm. on a matter that we have already approved. Right. Okay, so yes. please do not mention the event right. uh, that we have already approved. Uh, so let's keep discussion basically mm -hmm. on this document, okay? Right. All right, just um, council question, just a question. Um, I gather that how exactly the matter transpired is a matter of record. Mm -hmm. So at the very least, people can, um, who are interested, can ask for copies of the minutes. Mm 
of course. Mm -hmm. of, of, course. of the yes. ordinance committee mm -hmm. and see what happened there and why that group was caught in, in the middle and also who was involved in helping that there were actually uh, public officials involved in changing the uh, location. Mm -hmm. So um, just so that people know, minutes are available and even the tape of the ordinance committee meeting, it should be available to people. Okay. And then they could make their own decisions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a motion on the floor to approve document 8315. It has been properly seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion only on this document? Okay, if there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Madam Chair, continue with document 8615. Thank you, Council President. On 8615 was a school bus parking. This was requested by Karen Caratini. Um, this is to order a public hearing and any requisite language from the city attorney that might be required. This is basically... Um, Second. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> basically allowing for the creation of a placard system mm -hmm. um, that would allow bus drivers to that live in the city that have shown proof of residency to the police department mm -hmm. to obtain a placard through the police department that they can put on the windshield of their vehicle during the school day between school hours like 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. so that during their shift they can go home in between and leave the school bus in their driveway or on the street which has been a problem and it came up from the subcommittee with a unanimous favorable recommendation we do not have the language though from the city attorney um, for that public hearing I'm going to make that in the form of a motion. Second. And I, motion has been made and properly second. Uh, I'm going to add uh, just a few explanations to what mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Bernard indicated. The request was initially to uh, change the ordinance. Uh, and rather than changing the ordinance, which uh, uh, discourage mm -hmm. bus companies from parking their vehicles in the city, uh, uh, we created, we are uh, creating a process by which we will provide temporary uh, uh, placards to bus drivers in the city, that lives in the city, so they can park their vehicle temporarily for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Council President, yes, if I may, ahead. also it's from 8 to 2, only mm -hmm. till 2 o'clock. Yes. Um, and again, I thought it was uh, really interesting how we saw that when people come before us and say, that a current, a current ordinance is not working for them and they live in our city, that we are able to put our heads together and come up with some really good mm -hmm. um, plans for addressing the need. And uh, so I think that this was a very exciting talk and I encourage anyone who has the time to watch the ordinance committee meeting on that um, where it gets specific and the uh, public hearing, you know, will be held in two weeks from now. Do you think we'll have the language, language by then? We might need a, more time. We need more time. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll just back down. In the well, city we can, uh, you can t talk to the city attorney. Uh, I know that he's very, <coughs> he's very busy. I, uh -huh. uh, I guess just let the. Uh, I, I need to provide. Okay. 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 Um, I guess if it's not going to be the next meeting, if we just let the bus people know so they don't all show up. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me see what I can do. Thank you. Okay, so are we saying that as if now it would be for May 5th? Well, we can order the public hearing. Right. We don't have to set a date. And we we, we need to do, do that anyway. And uh, if the attorney feels that he's not going to be able to uh, do it on time. Okay, so the date. I'll do what I can. I, I can't suggest You don't set a date tonight, I don't, I don't anyway, have, it's okay. I don't, I don't know without an ordinance. I need an mm -hmm. ordinance before I can order the public. I mean, so you'll let me know? Absolutely, right away. What date? Right away. Okay. So that means even before the next council meeting? As soon as I get an ordinance. No, no, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to <laughs> make sure order, I understand. We can order the public hearing. Let's say, you know, let's, say the, let's say the fifth unless you hear from me. Right, the fifth, <laughs> unless I hear from you, okay. Because I just want to, you know, be able to call people and tell them, no, you know, it's not going, it's not going to happen. We're not, we're not setting a date, we're not setting a date to order the public, and we are simply saying order the public hearing. 
once he has the appropriate language, he will mm -hmm. order the public hearing. He will order, he yes. can go ahead and order it yes, without we already under the, the, the approval. We already okay. gave him the approval to do so. Okay, okay. 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 The motion has been made <laughs> and properly second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Madam Chair, continue with document 9015. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Document number 90-15 was livery service. This was um, Reliable Transportation, LLC. Um, this is a livery service, not a placard or a um, mm -hmm. medallion mm -hmm. taxi cab. They have two vehicles registered at Blanchard Street. And this specifically is for allowance of two vehicles. I just want to have that stated on the record so that they don't show up with 62 vehicles. Um, but that for Reliable Transportation, LLC, to have two vehicles Authorized, it came up with um, Officer Jose Flores's favorable recommendation that paperwork is in order, and it came up from the subcommittee with a unanimous favorable recommendation to grant this new livery service um, their license. I make that in the form of a motion. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and properly second to approve document 9015. Are there any discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Madam Chair, continue. Thank you, Council President. Um, Document number 91-15, um, while it is part of Semana Hispana, the actual applicant on this is Casa Dominicana, and they're requesting permission to use the Campagnon Common Park on June 11th from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. for Dominican night. This was requested by Juan Pasquale, and it came up from the ordinance committee with unanimous favorable recommendation to approve the um, use of the common. Second. To make that in the form of a motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any other questions or discussion? Discussion. Yes. So I'm going to be voting in favor of this. I just have a question, Council President. Yes. yes. Again, I'm, I'm not going to refer back to that self common one like as you directed. Thank you. Thank you. But I, <laughs> but I will ask a question regarding the sign offs. Again, this has all the proper sign offs. Mm -hmm. and I just want to understand uh, the importance of these sign offs. Mm -hmm. So, are we, as, if, if these sign offs aren't here, is the council then authorized to go ahead and support it? Thankfully, they're here, but should those not be here? Normally, guidance? normally the, pro the procedure is that the ordinance committee reviews right. the documents, yeah. makes certain that all the, mm -hmm. all the signatures well, are there. Anyway. If there are any documents or any signatures missing, mm -hmm. that those documents will be uh, tabled and then uh, Yes. Uh, request the information. So basically, that's what that's what the case is. So, so we will we can still pass them even if they don't have the signatures, or are we required to have the signatures no, we, before we pass them? The uh, the ordinance committee would not send that up with a favorable recommendation if it unless be, all the signatures are there. If it wouldn't be missing any 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 papers. Mm -hmm. So I just, so Could just to clarify, we have we have approved approved. As I think Council Vasquez was about to say, we we have approved items without paperwork pending their receipt. Pending or, exactly. But okay. yeah, we do wait for the paper. Yes. yes. But again, so at such before that event takes place, and again, thankfully, this is Fana Samana Day for the Domin um, uh, Dominicana mm -hmm. uh, is going to go on as scheduled, and that's good. Yes. But I, sh I just want to make clear, I understand. So if they did not get signed off at, before the event, could they lawfully go ahead and have uh, whatever that um, event is, in this case, maybe a, a day well, or normally, a Normally, the... Uh, the ordinance committee would not send that up exactly. with a favorable recommendation. No, I get that, but but we have these conditions sometimes. We say that if they don't have it, they still need to get sign-offs, as the council mm -hmm. just mentioned. What happens is that if the, uh, it comes up to the full council without a recommendation, mm -hmm. and then if the paperwork is submitted by that time, when it comes to the full council, right. then the full council will approve it, or otherwise the full council rejects it or, or table it. It was not pending any information whenever it comes in front of us. Mm -hmm. Right, so I just want to make sure I'm clear on the process. And I'm sorry, this is, happens to be coming this evening, and it's just, I, I, I think this is going to be a great time. But um, I just, so if they didn't, if they didn't have the sign-offs, and I understand that almost every time they do, almost every time, mm -hmm. would, would, does that automatically happen? Do they automatically, is this, is this the permit essentially once we approve okay. it? Is this their permit? What's the permit that they get? Where did that? Where does that come from? I just I've been here for ten years and I still don't know where that comes from. Uh, will you ask the question again? Sure. So, I had a chance to talk to um, to the city some city officials today about permits for just these kinds yes. of events. Yes. And and there really is no permit. They really don't get a permit for something like this at the common, for example. So I'm just trying to figure out. 
how important are these signatures? If these signatures aren't on this sheet of paper, if the clerk whose signature is on here, if the clerk, for whatever reason, in his experience says, I, for whatever the reasons are, I, I, I don't think this is a good idea. I'm not going to sign this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. and, but it comes before us anyway. If whatever happens, the council is adamant at the committee level. We want to get this to the full council. Mm -hmm. And the full council says, we are going to pass it. Does that... Does it require to have everybody's signature on the sheet of paper? It requires the, for all the signatures, but again, uh, basically the objective is to make sure that every department that is going to be affected one way or the other is aware of what is going to go on. Mm -hmm. Okay? Whether the council has the power to approve something without a signature on one particular department, probably we do have the power. But, but, but traditionally, we haven't. So do, do we have the power? Do we, is it our authority to go ahead, even if the yeah, department has some sign off on it? Can we essentially override the department? The, uh, the authority lies on the hands of the city council. Mm -hmm. Okay, the authority lies on the hands of the city council, regardless of whether the signatures are there or not. Traditionally, we have never approved as far as I can remember, right. that has gone through the ordinance committee, we have never approved any, any activities unless they have all the signatures. Because we, we want to make sure that every department becomes aware of the event that is taking place and if they have any concerns. For example, in this particular last situation, right. there were some concerns. We were informed of the concerns and there were changes <coughs> made. And, even and, and, that's, and that's clear. So, so this essentially, the, so I'm clear, the department heads, they are going through this process to advise the council. The council makes the correct. ultimate decision. Um, and, that, and, and the one point that I just wanted to copy, and, and thank you for the clarification. Yes. You've been very patient with me, and I do really, really a, a appreciate that. Uh, there is one just, I mean, we can't say that it's never happened because it has happened once. That, that there has been one instance where the departments have not signed off on something. I just want to make sure we're clear okay. on that. And okay. that has not been done. So okay. except for one exception, that, that has taken place. But I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Know, but again, exception. the power relies on the city council. The authority relies totally on the city council. Uh, you had a, an, another comment? Yes. Sure, yes, Mr. President. Um, I think that even though we do request it for every um, event that will be taking place at the public parks, uh, I don't see always the necessity. Let's say, and this is an example. Uh, the food inspector, not every, for instance, the one that we just recently approved right before this one is for church services. Uh, they're doing it specifically for religious activities, which means that they're, that they're not going to have um, food. Uh, food preparation mm. uh, there. There's not going to be a need for uh, a special uh, food permits per se. So I understand we request it for everyone, but I don't see the need for the food inspector to have to sign off in the religious activities, uh, as an example. And, and that's my, my personal take on it. I understand. I mean, just, that means that the, the, the food inspector, who is also the health inspector, is aware of the event yes. and knows that it's happened. And she also knows that she didn't give them a special permit mm -hmm. to have food at that event. So if she's out driving around that day, and she drives by that particular location, yes. and she sees a big hamburger tent, mm -hmm. she knows she didn't license it. Well, she and knows that, and, the park, and then she knows exactly who to go after for the violation and were they allowed to use the park but not to have food? So I do think, well, sometimes, like having DPW sign off, they're not doing anything that really impacts the DPW in any way, but that means that that department is aware of it. Mm -hmm. If any of their inspectors are out that day, they'll, they'll see it. They know who authorized the use or that it was authorized at all. If they go out and see a group that they've never heard of using a locale and there's a problem, that they know nobody has signed off on that venue. In fairness to Council LaPlante, I know we're not supposed to talk about this item, the department signed off on the use of the North Common. Mm -hmm. No one signed off on the use of the South Common. To pretend that that didn't happen is a fallacy, and we're lying to ourselves if we keep saying it. Uh, I think we have tried very hard. Mm -hmm. And as chairperson of the Ordinance Committee, I, I hold my head heavy on that one, because I, I worked with the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. We brought it up in good faith. We okay. worked with Mr. Bonds, okay. with Mr. Ortiz, with the committee. I, I don't think anything was done to be sneaky. It was a live broadcasted meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't anything thought anyone would be doing anything in bad faith. In hindsight, should we have asked that committee to go out and get those documents re-signed? Yeah, we should have. Mm -hmm. 
in hindsight, well, yeah, we should have. And, and I take responsibility for that. I'm the chairman of that committee, and I didn't, never even entered my mind until Council of Plant brought it up after the fact. That, I feel badly that that wasn't, because that would have brought it to his attention prior to the meeting. He, we don't all watch every subcommittee meeting. Mm -hmm. We try to, we try to talk to each other in between, but it doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that the concerns he has are real. That's his district, his constituents were not aware of it. That's fair. Right. To criticize him for having those concerns isn't fair to him. But we made a decision, and I think Council President Maldonado says it best when it is the Council's decision ultimately. Yes. I was hoping to try to rectify tonight to even talk it through, and, and even if we voted to reaffirm ourselves. But I, we don't always all agree. No. But to say that Council Plant is not being fair when he makes that point is, is not right. He is it's his district. It wasn't done according to the usual custom that we always follow. And for him to raise that point is extremely valid. And I personally, as a chairman of the subcommittee, really do you think, gosh, I really made a mistake. I really do think that. And I'm mean, saying it on TV. Like, that's not something you say lightly. And if I could do that over again, I would definitely do it differently. Mm -hmm. But as other councils have said, we've taken a final vote and we've given those people a license. Mm -hmm. um, it, we, need, we need to keep that in mind, too. If we can't take a reconsideration, that's something we as a body need to consider. But um, I, I do think we need to be fair to him because that's, that's a valid concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think Council that uh, mm -hmm. obviously uh, a lot of discussion has been generated. I'm sure that each one of you has been contacted by one way or the other by, both, by yeah. residents uh, of the South Common. Uh, I spoke to a lady today. And, uh, uh, obviously, the uh, the, re the, uh, the association of the South Common Park have some concerns, mm -hmm. uh, and I assure her that this was is not a matter that is going to happen every year. Right. It just happens right. to be a situation that was uh, somewhat unavoidable, uh, and uh, in order to to allow Semana Hispana to move forward, uh, but. It is not to the advantage of Semana Hispana to split up the activity into different parks. Uh, so I assure her that Semana Hispana will have no interest in doing uh, this activity uh, Traditionally. In, in, in the South Common no. uh, anymore because it's not to their advantage. So they, they will continue doing it in the North and, uh, and we will continue supporting that activity in the North. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, I, I, I assure her that uh, she said, well, if I don't, I, I'm sure that, uh, that if I tell them uh, that probably somebody, from, an official person from the city council should come, and I said, I, I volunteer. I would be more than happy to go and explain to them that this is not a situation where we are looking to, uh, to use the South Common uh, <laughs> all, every year. This is a situation that just happened because of repairs that are being conducted in the North Common, and mm -hmm. that the, uh, the, uh, it is beneficial to Semana Hispana to conduct everything in the North Common. So uh, this will not, obviously this will not happen. Council President, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about it as well. Um, since despite your request not to discuss it, we are discussing it. <laughs> I, know. I would I know. like to put my two cents in. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and just say this, there was no, um, how is it, idea or strategy to bamboozle the residents of the South Common. Of course not, no, I understand. Um, I know that when we were in the Ordinance Committee, we discussed different places where the carnival could take place given that they could not use the North Common. Mm -hmm. Um, because it was going to be under construction. At that time, they went back and they worked with um, the recreational director, um, and they looked at different areas and then decided that the South Common, and it was one of the locations that was discussed at the Ordinance Committee, would be um, a proper location where you have grass and you know people can sit down and enjoy the carnival. Um, the, the other part was that in our agenda, because we didn't get the information beforehand, and I know the, the um, 
chair of the ordinance committee didn't get the information beforehand that it would be, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that, it, that the decision had been for the South Common yeah. Park. Um, we weren't able uh, to put on the agenda what the ultimate decision was. Um, but it wasn't something that the members of Semana Hispana went alone to do. They were talking with people at the administration um, about the different locations. And even though they looked at the, the, the um, uh, gateway uh, parking lot, if that's, you know, for lack of a better word, um, or title, they looked at that spot, they, they really prefer to have a place where there's grass, and et cetera, because of the number of children that would be involved. Um, and I also want to clarify, because some people think that it's going to be also Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But the event is from Thursday through Sunday. And um, we had, I would have uh, been OK with making it up to 9 o'clock for all the nights. But instead, we, um, we were able to do Sunday to 9 o'clock. And those were some of the changes that were made right here. And I wish that um, we could have given people more time to know about the event. But the way I felt was if we send these people out with representatives from the city, not just any representative, but the director of the recreational department, you know, to go on and to do this, then and select the space, then I, was, I felt uncomfortable about now saying, well, you can't, and then giving them, creating more of an obstacle for them to raise the money that they want in the length of time that they, that they need to do it in. So, you know, I do, I do hear what you've said. I mean, you've even called me and we talked about it. Um, I had a lovely lady um, named Pam who wrote a nice uh, email letter to me with her concerns and I try to respond to it as best as I could. But um, I don't, I just want people to know that it wasn't a uh, deliberate uh, attack on, you know, South Lawrence because we're all Laurentians, North and South, we're all Laurentians. And that's important <coughs> to, to reiterate every time we meet and we talk, South and North are Laurentians and they're Laurentians and we care about them too. Councilor. Thank you. President. Uh, uh, first, Councillor Aquino and then uh, Councillor Reyes. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor, I, I know you would like to, uh, let, let me say this. Uh, we are talking like about one. something else. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That had nothing to but do with the motion had, that was made. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what I would like to do is approve the motion and then uh, we're allowed, because this is a very, very sensitive you issue, approve. what I would like to do is approve uh, document 9115, the motion has been made, and then we can continue the discussion on this other item. If, okay? If we approve uh, the motion, I don't think it's a need to discuss and continue discussing because what I just want to mention is that we got involved talking about South Common when this specific item has nothing to do with going and being on South Common. Yes. This mm -hmm. is going to be happening on common so i don't even yes. know no and no I, that's, a, and that's I think, why I'm and i think it's fair you know we know that he has a lot of push mm -hmm. from his constitution but we have push from ours too so okay. this is not something that eventually is going to be happening years and yearly mm -hmm. this is only one time and we have a reason why it's need to be happening so why we don't make the motion and then close the discussion okay, okay. can i have the chance please it won't take <laughs> two minutes everyone had had the okay. chance i just yeah. wanted to mention that we had a very extent meeting last um, la to approve the past item on that agenda. Mm -hmm. If we as counselor do our homework to look all the papers, we will notice if there was missing signatures. It's not one meeting. It, it wasn't in one meeting. Mm -hmm. We have a subcommittee meeting 
And if we have concerns about a specific item, we should go, as counselors, we should go to the meetings. Mm -hmm. We are allowed to go to the meetings. It's not fair for us to be talking even about the item when the people that are gonna be affected are not even here. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't happen. Okay. We have the chance to review those papers, to review that item. That's it. We take that as an example for the next item to come. We know, I know, because I was part of the ordinance committee, and we used to send um, items, even here for the final vote. We used to approve them with the um, pending the signatures, and they will drop the signatures to the, um, Mr. Maloney. So it's not fair for us to be talking about something that has nothing to do with um, Casa Dominicana and Noche Dominicana. So we, we're here trying to mix things that are totally different. No, yeah, we passed the motion. We had the authority to pass mm -hmm. the motion. I understand that there's some things that need to be changed for next year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, there is a motion on the floor, and it has been properly seconded. Let's take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure that the ordinance committee, the members of the ordinance committee, uh, basically uh, have learned something new, okay, that we should be very careful. Uh, if, if something like that comes up again, where the location needs to be changed because of reasons, uh, and obviously we need to keep that in mind, okay? Council uh, President, did everybody else have a chance to talk about it? I have not had a chance to talk about it. You started it. it. I was talking. It's done. I, can, I, I, Council I, President, I, I please. My tongue when he said we could talk about. We do not have that I item not. on the agenda. For order, 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 order. I really listened order. to the other counselor. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was very patient. Listened. Hold on, hold on. Uh, if you want to discuss that particular issue, I will allow it at the end of the meeting. Okay. Okay. So, uh, again, because it's a very sensitive and and it, it touches a lot of people and it has touched. Your district, personally, I will allow the discussion, but it's going to be right after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Madam Chair, can you continue with document 9615, please? Document number 96-15 was with regard to Lawrence High School graduation, looking for a parking ban on North Parish Road on the north side from Osgood Street, point 445, excuse me, 475 feet on the easterly direction of point opposite end of Crawford Street and North Parish Road, south side from Osgood Street, 475 seat in the easterly direction, the corner of Crawford Street. So it'll be on May 31st, which is their graduation date, or June 1st, which is their rain date, from 12 midnight, 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, so basically, they would pre-post it, um, and I just said midnight, and that's wrong, from noon to 9 p.m. They're looking for a nine-hour window on graduation day <coughs> to help prevent cars from going down the street. They're so busy that day with so many kids. Um, that it just would be like a pedestrian way. <coughs> it came up from the subcommittee with a unanimous favorable recommendation to approve the ordinance. To order public hearing. To order public hearing. <coughs> I mean, the form of motion. Okay. Got that. <coughs> Excuse me. I make that a formal motion. You want some water? Okay. So. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Motion. Second has been made to order public hearing on document 9615. It has been properly taken. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, I'm gonna wait for a few seconds. Yeah, yeah. it's coming. It's coming. done, so. Mm -hmm. okay. She's done. <coughs> Is she done? Yeah, she's done. It's game over. Yeah. Yeah, I feel so bad. I know how terrible that could be. Okay. Uh, before I uh, go into the new business, I'm gonna, going to allow Mr. Plan and only Mr. Plan to express his point of view because I, everybody else has already, uh, so Mr. Plan. We're not going to do the old business? Huh? We're not going to do old business? Uh, anyone, uh, anyone has an old business? Uh, let me, oh, no, we have to. They're on the agenda. They're on the agenda. So, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. First two items, uh, if I may, uh, Council President yes. and Councilors, the first two items, I, document 28 of 14 and 29 of 14, you may recall that uh, it's been a recent discussion that um, alternate side parking uh, was an issue, the winter parking ban as to uh, Orchard Street, 
between Newbury and Union and Garden Street between Newbury and Union Streets were an issue uh, this past winter, to, so much so that it was revived by Council Reyes. Council Reyes and I have discussed the matter uh, completely. I brought it to the attention of the city attorney that the removal of those two streets was done improperly in 2008. Mm -hmm. And my memory of it was uh, very distinct on that issue. I brought it to the matter, it's to the attention of the city attorney who uh, issued a memorandum basically reinstating both uh, streets because there was no public uh, notice as okay. to the removal in 2008. Um, those two documents are presently pending a public hearing. There is an order for public hearing that entered by the council, uh, there is no longer a need for a public hearing because by direction of the city attorney, I will be reinstating both those streets to the winter parking ban alternate side parking. Okay, so there's no actual required on the city council. The vote to, re uh, I'd be asking the council to call up through you, council president, is to remove an order for public hearing and then proceed by way of withdrawal. Okay. Um, city cl uh, question on this? No, let's get the motion first. What's the, the motion? motion is to uh, rescind the public, rescind hearing. The public the, hearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And remove by. And then withdraw the and item. Then and withdraw then withdraw the, the, the item. Yes. Okay. So moved. Motion second. has been made. I'm properly second. Discussion. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Again, the discussion is on document 2814 and 2914. Right. In 2008, you're saying that there was no public hearing on this? That's correct. It came up from the committee, and I recall it very distinctly that it was ordered to be removed, and the council president at the time uh, suggested that a, the removal of the item should not go by way of public hearing. A subsequent opinion from the city attorney was that because the ordinance was created by public hearing, it can only be removed by public hearing. I think you were on the council at the time. Yes, I was, and the reason why I'm asking is because uh, a number of residents came to me asking that that be removed. And now you're saying that that same group of people is coming back now and saying they want it back. Well, I, I can't speak to that, but I, I suggest that the council of the district you. would probably be yeah. best be able so to maybe attest to that. So maybe we can talk about that because. Yes, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Through you, Mr. Press. Yes, go We just get used to start talking without asking. Um, yes, um, remember the last time we had this conversation, you and I, we were supposed to be meeting with them and set up something with them present, just to explain to you, because we knew that you was original who started this. So before they ask you to remove, then um, I don't know what happened in the meantime, but then they wanted it back when I was a um, former consul. So, so that they is didn't the seem to work for them. Exactly, anyway. but now they feel the needs that they needed. So that is the reason that he explained that we need to order public hearing, which that part was missing, and withdraw the document. But you know, we open it. So anytime that you have some time, we can meet up and we can discuss with them. So that way you can hear from them what is the reason they wanted it now. No, I mean it's if you have the reason why they want it, I don't see why, you know, we will have to, you know, take it any further. Um, but I don't know, I know that it was Ana Rodriguez and Luz Santana yes. and all same, those people same, involved. Same group of people. So, so it, I mean, like a lot of times people come here thinking yeah. they want one thing and then they find out that that doesn't work and. That is why mm -hmm. when someone requests me to do something, and it's only one person. I would like to meet with the whole entire group for mm -hmm. them to understand what yes. is going to happen, who's going to be affected, who's going to be taking benefits from, and we work from that. But like you say, yeah, sometimes yeah. they say no, sometimes well, they say yes, but it's yeah. the same group of people who ask you to remove them. Right, because I went before, I had a meeting before a large group of people who were saying we want this removed and who were upset about the ticketing. And we dealt with the ticketing. We, I even took the people to the chief of police, and there was a long discussion, which is why I say, I don't know now the why people. all of a sudden 
they I don't know. want it anymore. I know how you get surprised when because you we went that. from one step, two step, three step, four. Right? It wasn't something that just happened lightly. Believe me, you learn in your way, but yeah, that, that is true. So, okay, you know. the motion Thank is you. to rescind the uh, public hearing and to uh, withdraw. withdraw those two documents, document 2814 and 2914. Mm -hmm. A uh, motion was made and properly second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, document 7515 is going to be referred back to the, um, to the Ordinance Committee. Okay. All right. Uh, back to Ordinance. Are there any, any matters, any, uh, table matters uh, that anybody would like to bring out? If there's none, Mr. Plant. And, and really, Council President, it means an awful lot to me that you gave me a chance to speak. I, I first of all, I want to thank um, my colleague from um, Mount Vernon, um, District E, for those very kind words. It, it is not easy to say what she had to say this evening, mm -hmm. um, and it takes a lot of courage to make those comments. And I, my respect for her has, which was already high, has gone even higher tonight. So I just wanted to publicly thank her for her um, candor and her honesty and her willingness to make those comments because they, they're very, very, very meaningful to me. Um, let me just start quickly by adding that Hispanic Week is for seven communities. Maybe it's eight. Let me list them off because uh, I think it's fantastic. Peru, Ecuador, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Haiti, Mexico, and Guatemala. Uh, these are um, population groups that are in our city. Our city is 70% Latino or Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And so it's right that we should go ahead and celebrate the various ethnicities that make the fabric of our city. And so um, there would be nothing more meaningful to me than to have a vibrant and successful uh, week that celebrates the variety of cultures of which many of us around this table come from and those of us who are immigrants from two or three generations ago also came to this country. I'm sorry that there is no French Canadian week or day. There never has been, probably never will be. Uh, but, you know, good for the folks who, um, uh, who decided to make an effort I'll to have uh, a time to celebrate the ethnicities that makes our city so vibrant and so different. One of the things that comes to make this event powerful is they need money. It's very candid. You can't have an accessible event without raising money. And so, when they came before the council looking for money uh, or looking to raise money, I think this council in a knee-jerk reaction rightfully said, what can we do to help? Let's see what we can, let's see what we can do to make this a festivity uh, that's worthy of our attention and worthy of our time. And so they wanted to have a carnival and I think that's fine, that raises money. The question here that we talked about is, it's raising of money. That's what this event is about, this first event, so that this, the real event can be really good. And to think that the South Common is better than the Gateway Park, no one can say that, Common, because it's never been done at either place. The most important thing here is for them to raise money, okay? And when I talked to Mr. Flynn, who's the operations director for the carnival, he came here and said that there was a slope and they couldn't do it and advised the senior team of the Hispanic Week that they should not have it there. I contacted Mr. Flynn after doing some homework and I said to him, have you had a chance to take a look at the Gateway Park? And he said, well, I haven't been there in a while. I go, would you be willing to go back there and take a look and see if it's feasible? He went back there. He went back there with the uh, planning department. They went ahead and took a look at that site he contacted me afterwards and says, Mark, I think we can do it there. I think we can do it. One of the major obstacles there was that they didn't think they could be able to make money, which is what this is all about, and not inconvenience people in a certain area. So they could go to a location that is behind the Everett Mill, of which, by the way, there is grass there, if you had a chance to go by. There is a place to sit. It is a place that they can make money. That's what this is all about. So it really, you know, when I came back and I talked to the organizers and I said, listen, see if you can make this work. 
your organization, your festival here is about bringing people together. It's about celebrating who we are as a city. What we're trying to do there is to support what you're trying to do. We're also trying to build neighborhoods. We're also trying to, that's really important. Everybody here talks about that. How important it is to have strong neighborhoods? And we go to neighborhood association meetings. We support what they do. We've, we, 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 National Night Out, we applaud, we go. This is a, a neighborhood that was not even consulted prior to it. And I don't think, frankly, it is too late. We talked about it's a fait accompli. That's not necessarily the case. I think that there's still an opportunity for those individuals to A, make the money, B, look to the rest of the city as leaders and say, yeah, we had a chance to reevaluate things, and yes, we had, when more information came before us, we decided that the best thing to do as a city, because is to do it here where you're not, where you're not impacting. So when I made those comments earlier, and I know that I was kind of going in a roundabout way because we couldn't talk about it, but the fact of the matter is, is that you know, the, the police department doesn't know whether or not that's a good location right now. They haven't had a chance to talk about it. The DPW hasn't had a chance to sign off on it. We have not had their opportunity to go ahead and get their feedback. If their feedback was important, if it wasn't important, we wouldn't be asking them to fill out these documents. If it is, we just wanted to do what we thought was right, why have them go through the effort? The effort that they did was for the North Common. I don't think there was any malice involved by any member of this council. I think that this council worked on good faith, thought that what they were doing was right. I don't think that anybody here was per deliberately trying to, do, to, to really hurt anybody uh, in, in a part of um, the South Common area. Well, and I, I fully believe that. But now with the option of actually having a chance to make things better, we have an opportunity to, to, to improve on them. And when we say that, the, that you can watch the city council meetings, you can watch these things, our public, our open meeting laws are very clear. I looked specifically at the April 17th, I think it's the 17th, um, probably earlier than that, um, the, I think it was March, the March meeting, where this thing first came on, and I'm sorry I don't have the tip of my tongue, I just gave it to the clerk earlier, but uh, we had on there very specific, it was the Campagnone Common. That's where we decided to have it. Four days prior to it, it said something completely different. It said, a venue to be found. All that stuff, came here, venue to be found. That is a completely different document. I didn't know that we were gonna have that thing on that, and Councilor from District D was right. I, neither did my constituents. It's called an open meeting law. It's called an opportunity to let people know what's I happening guess. So that they can make those calls before, uh, please. So they can make those calls to us before the vote happens. It's part of our American system. It's part of the why it's in here, so that the public has an opportunity to give us information. It doesn't happen after the vote. It happens before the vote. So we have that. And again, I don't think that we fully understand what we just did here, but we kind of ran. I'm going to be harsh. I don't mean to be harsh. Rough shot over that. And. Um, I just, it, it saddens me as a city councilor that, w that, we, that we're gonna be going in this direction because there is a way out, there is a way to do things that doesn't, that doesn't affect, it still makes the money, which by the way is the goal. I can't say that often enough. And, and I'll stop there. I wanna thank you for letting, letting me have a chance to at least say that part of it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Plain. Okay, councilors, uh, we're gonna go into new business. Uh, Document 10415, uh, old gold and second-hand dealer license is going to be referred to the ordinance committee. Document 10515, uh, old gold dealer license uh, to the ordinance committee. Document 10615, residence parking to the ordinance committee. Document 10715, handicap parking to the ordinance committee. Document 10815, handicap parking to the ordinance committee. Document 10915, transient vendor license to the ordinance committee. Document 11015, transient vendor license to the Ordinance Committee, and document 11115, transient vendor license to the Ordinance Committee. Uh, document 11215, authorization to purchase real estate, uh, is going to go to the uh, Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, are there any, anything? Housing Committee. Housing meeting? Committee? Oh, yes. April 27th, if that's okay to the members, April 27th, next Monday. 
Yeah, next Monday. Can you make it, please? Pretty? Please. This <laughs> next Monday. <laughs> next Monday, seven o'clock. Twenty-seventh. Twenty-seventh. I'm not sure where Council Lamonte is, so I can't ask her. Are you doing seven or seven thirty? We will. Um, if unless there's something else on personnel, we will be happy to have it at seven. The uh, personal committee will not be meeting on that day because there's no business to uh, discuss. So uh, you have something seven. really urgent that you need. You have your item that you wanted to talk about. I right. thought that would be a good opportunity to do that, unless you want to forego that. And we also have one other matter that the full council referred to after we did the declared surplus. So mm -hmm. that still is outstanding that we need to move on that at some point. But There's that no has to. But that's urgent. The other part. I haven't got. Because mine the isn't urgent. You know, it's like. It waited this long. It cried a little bit longer. No one said, mm -hmm. "How about this? Let me talk to the let me talk to the planning folks. <coughs> see if they have uh, an urgency. If they do, we'll have it on the twenty seventh. If they say we can move, we'll stop. Okay, because I don't want to miss any meetings. I know. Um, but it's it's also I, I'm asking if people can be a little flexible. It's the end of the semester, and I have a lot of grading to do. Out of courtesy to you, counselor, <laughs> let me contact the, the, those folks at the planning and see if they mm -hmm. can if it's okay we move it off a couple weeks. That yeah. sounds fair. Okay. That sounds fair. Budget okay. on finance. They have to happen a beer. Okay. Budget on finance is um, not meeting tomorrow. We'll be meeting on the 28th. Do you guys receive the email? No. It was sent by Lillian, I believe, like a week and a half ago or so. Any particular reason why you guys are not meeting tomorrow? Uh, the licensing board is having a very big meeting oh, that's right. tomorrow. Yes. yes. Uh, so Lillian did uh, send an email in reference to it. Okay. Day the 28th? Uh, yes. If you guys are not available, we could move it to the 20th. Well, I wouldn't want to do the 29th because I have a neighborhood meeting. As long as we have the papers, okay. <laughs> exactly. we have enough topics. If we need more time, I'll rather go to the first. We are giving. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mr. President, for the last document, uh, document 112.15, I think, it, you know, through you, I think it will make more sense to send it to the housing uh, committee instead of budget and finance. The reason being because we have document 113.15, which is the loan order. That Remember that there's money involved. Uh, so the, that's, why, that's why I refer that to the uh, Budget and Finance Committee. Yeah, but uh, the uh, 113 will be the money portion of it. Right. 112 uh, will oh, okay. be more about okay. the construction okay. and the, okay. the design. Then, and, then let me refer that to the Housing Committee. Uh, Ms. Laplan is already aware of the details. Which one is this? Uh, document 112.15. Okay. That one deals specifically with the now, construction if, and engineering. If, okay. uh, now, this will require it. This will require a fast meeting. You mean by fast? Well, uh, it requires uh, an action. Or you Me want to be sooner rather than later, not a really quick meeting. Exactly. So. Exactly. Oh. Yes. Uh, the loan needs to be approved, but also the authorization to purchase needs to be approved before we conduct a public hearing. Because this is going to be part of a, this is basically going to be a, a part two of that whole public hearing. So we order public hearing, uh, and this is important because there are issues in terms of you guys need to request uh, you guys need to request appraisals. Okay, the appraisals that were done, you need to request us to make sure that we end up. Huh? No, no, no. We we had an appraisal done right. by the, that company. If you recall, when we were on, the, on when you were on conference call, Mass development. Mass development. Yes. So they did an appraisal, uh, but again, the objective is to make sure that we're not paying more for a building than it has been appraised for. That is correct. That is correct. I'll put the card before the board. Okay. Um, we have to take our time and do it right. Well, the question is, uh, the question is whether the uh, housing committee is going to have enough information uh, by that time. 
what, whatever time you, you guys said to meet. Did you ever receive it? Because I requested the day that, we, that our meeting took place. Yes, yes. I requested that information. That information has not been received yet. And I, no. I don't have it yet. Do you, you want to, I haven't seen it. Do you want to work on the, now that you know that the council president has provided us some, some urgency, mm -hmm. would, would now would you be willing, I, I know we talked about some other date, but it appears that there's mm -hmm. a need now. Can you make it, is there a better time for you on Monday? No, sir. The earlier I get out, the better. Well, uh, what time? So seven, seven yeah, o'clock meeting, all right. Uh, unless, you know, I know you're coming. So yeah, it's not easy to get I don't mind doing it at 7.30 even. You, know. you want to do it later? I thought you wanted it earlier. No, no, I'm saying to, because sometimes I'm here and then people get here later. <laughs> so we might as well say 7.30 now. It's mm -hmm. up to you. You can make. I, I have no objection that the counselor from Eat has no objection. Seven thirty works for me. Either where way. Seven's good for me, but if you feel more comfortable at seven thirty, that's not a problem. So, what did you want, counselor? I'm, I'm just trying to. Um, you want to give him I'm more time. To get you guys. Thank you. If if. I'll be there at 7. I can commit to that. I don't have a problem being here. I don't want to start later. Okay, so I can commit to 7. seven, seven, seven. Okay. Okay, okay, 7. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, should we, is, is, do you think that there's, there will be a need to order a public hearing for this one? Should we do it today as well? So it goes hands in hand with uh, the other document? No, I don't think we, the authorization to purchase basically is the money for which we are conducting the public hearing. I don't think we, we need to conduct a public hearing on this one. We can combine them, uh, but I don't think we need to order a public hearing on this I think because this understand. does not appropriate money. No, but we will be authorizing to purchase a piece of land, even though we're not. That, that, not that is true, to that is true. What, it, what is your opinion, Mr. Clark? It wouldn't hurt to order the public hearing uh, on the same basis, suspend the okay. rules. Okay. If I don't need it, I won't use okay. it. I'll consult with the city attorney on it. Okay. So if you want to reopen the issue on uh, 1215 to have a motion to suspend the rules to order a public hearing and then a vote. Uh, who would like to make that motion? So move uh, what motion is that? Motion to suspend Second. the rule and order a public hearing on document 112.15. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Great. And then if we don't need it, it's yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Councillors, thank you again. 27, 7 o'clock. Uh, I would like to entertain motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion has been made to adjourn. It has been properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you.